maybe let, let's turn to the room, to the audience. Uh, would there be uh, questions, comments? Uh, Philippe, you would like, Mrs. Kwon? Uh, yeah, may I say I'm a bit surprised uh, because in listening to you, I had the impression that the food problem was just a technological one and with some money uh, invested in the private sector, there wouldn't be any more food problem. Uh, you didn't speak about one individual called the farmer, neither perhaps a bit our friend from Nigeria, did you speak about uh, public policies? May I remind you that in the 30s, Europe was a net food importer, that in the 50s, the PL 480 was created in the United States to send food aid, especially grains, to India. That very India which is now threatening uh, the uh, food markets with the embargo because they are exporter of rice, of sugar, of wheat. Uh, where are the successes of Europe over India? Perhaps technologies, yes, but at first it was public policies, the common agricultural policy in Europe. And what is uh, not enough studied uh, the Indian agricultural policy with a guarantee of remunerative prices for farmers. Don't you think this is this thing which is important? That's true that Africa is dependent, is importing Nigeria. You're the world's biggest uh, with Egypt. In fact, uh, Nigeria and Egypt, you're the world's biggest wheat importer. In the 50s, Nigeria was the net food exporter. You were the biggest uh, exporter of palm oil, if, if I remember. So don't you think that the first problem is a problem of public policy, of uh, agricultural policies, and unfortunately, in some of your countries, farmers don't vote, or their political power is fairly limited. Well understood. The, re the rebellion of public policy, Philippe. Uh, yeah, so let, let me ask, yeah. uh, let me, before you... Uh, because Maybe I'm going to ask Mrs. Ah. Kwon also to intervene, because we don't have much time left, and then all of you will get a chance to uh, uh, conclude. Mrs. Kwon? Certainly, I feel... Uh, thank you very much. First of all, for, for, thank you very much for sharing... Uh, with us, your very extraordinary activities. And after uh, Mr. Uh, Shalman's uh, question, I feel certainly, you know, my question <laughs> is not very, very important. But um, I personally uh, convinced, I'm convinced that uh, the technology is really uh, one of the very important solution uh, to the problem of uh, our food insecurity issue. And, and especially just for that, I have a small question to Mr. Park. And I'm uh, personally very, very uh, fascinated uh, by this um, uh, smart farm technology. But, you know, as a, a, a one of the person who uh, like very much to eat very uh, good food, uh, my concern is, you know, all products from a smart farm uh, do you think uh, uh, they can contain the same uh, nutritional quality or taste? Yeah. Okay. So again, <laughs> who would, yeah. you know, please go. I think there's a third question for you. If you want yeah, to take all the questions. Unfortunately, very quickly, please, madam. Yeah, it's very please short. Go ahead. Um, yeah. Yes, I was just surprised to hear uh, that uh, genetically modified uh, GMOs. What it's all. The GMOs are sort of uh, normalized now because they appear to be safe. What if that? Uh, is there something official about that now? And uh, there are normally the, uh, the World Organization, Monsieur is here, maybe he will confirm, has not uh, really approved that. So can you give clarity on that issue? Thank you. 
Okay, fine. Thank you very much. So GMOs, so, maybe two minutes each, yeah, so that minutes. we stick uh, into our time frame. Mm -hmm. Mr. Park, if you wish so, to start. I, I think the what uh, the method we use in indoor vertical farm or controlled, uh, you know, environment agriculture is different from like uh, GMO. So we don't do any, uh, you know, the fabrication uh, to the, the crops. The only thing we do is we basically use water and nutrient, and we don't use soil. Soil is actually something it can hold the crops, but we use some other uh, methodology to hold the, the crops, and then basically feeding uh, nutrient. So when I say, you know, the theoretically uh, modifying the taste or the ingredients, it's mainly done by controlling uh, climate. So, for example, the, the Korean strawberry is very sweet. If you try Korean strawberry, the, the sweetness is more, twice more than the, the strawberry in the uh, U.S. They are typically grown in you know, the traditional uh, the, the greenhouse. The reason Korean strawberry is uh, sweet is not because it's modified. It's because of the, the temperature difference between the, during the daytime and during the nighttime. So th that's the techniques we are using it. When I say controlling the climate, so if you want to make strawberry sweeter, then you, know, you, you can control the, the difference in the temperature. Some of the... Thank the, you, Mr. Farber. Yeah, just, just, just everybody seconds, has to get a chance. So very quickly, 30 seconds. Uh, yeah, two, two seconds. Like some of the, the crops with high uh, the, the functional ingredients is also done by, uh, you know, changing the, the light and then changing the temperature. You know, we don't do any modification. And normally the, the crops we produce has the same nutrient as the crops produced in the, the traditional farming. Thank you very much, Mr. Park. Uh, Mr. Hooley, uh, uh, one First, last for the, the question from uh, uh, Madame Biloa. I think that, uh, again, science has, has helped to demystify uh, a lot of things. And there is genetically modified food, and there is today the improvement, for example, in seedling or in the, the makeup of, of, uh, of, of food that, that creates better yield, for example. I'll give you an instance. Uh, I own an agriculture business and we supply the supermarket chains in, in Nigeria. And today, with science, with you know, uh, better seedling, uh, you're able to produce in a 200,000 meters a greenhouse controlled environment agriculture situation more food uh, to supply the supermarket chains than we were able to do in 200 hectares of you know, open air farmland uh, today. There, what is important in all of this is the safety and health and how to prove the safety of the, the seedlings that we use to produce uh, food today. And I think that the issue of GMO is still one of those issues that are out there. I don't know what the official policy uh, uh, on them is, but certainly science has helped to prove that some of the practices that were yesterday seen as taboo are actually uh, uh, safe today. With regards to the question over there, yes, it starts with policy. And this is very ironical, especially for us coming from, from Africa. Um, many, many years ago, Nigeria gave the first uh, palm uh, seedling or palm uh, uh, um, uh, trees to Malaysia. And today, the reverse is the case where palm oil is imported from Malaysia into Nigeria. Very sad situation, but yes, it starts from public policy, from governments realizing that uh, there is a big impact in not doing anything, and there is a big impact in doing something. And coupled to that is that private sector starts to see the economic benefit of making sure that there is resilience around supply chains. Today, you have a lot of uh, uh, the, the meals, the, the flour meals, for example, uh, in Africa, starting to see that you have all of these machinery and production lines, but you need supply chain um, uh, 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 contribution from places like Ukraine, for example, to, to get wheat, uh, you know, to make sure that the, the factories are running. The more these people start, the more private sector starts to realize the impact of this, then maybe the hands of 
uh, governments are forced with regards to public policy. But spot on, it's, uh, it, it's the truth. The camera? Uh, this is a very important area you raised. Uh, at Canal Sugar, we work with 6,000 farmers. We'll reach about 20,000 farmers within three more years. You are right. Uh, the farmers do all the work, and they get maybe 10 cents on the dollar from anything that's done. If there is uh, food waste uh, due to supply chain, the farmer is the, uh, he or she, and mostly it's she, the farmers. People think of farmers, they're only men, mostly they're women. They are the ones uh, who suffer. When it comes to public policy, people in agriculture, people forget the Treaty of Rome before the EU was probably in the beginning purely an agriculture uh, project. Uh, the farmers are suffering all over the world. One of the issues is the uh, uh, lack of development in the public policy format, in the legislation format. They don't have access to legal papers for their land, so they cannot get financing for, for the land because generally it's the land is given or inherited or is owned by several people. So they have to go to the industry, the other part of private sector who will charge them so much uh, for uh, ensuring funding. And then the same thing on access to technology and access to, to seeds and, and what have you. Uh, you are right that uh, this is, uh, this is a, a shame that agriculture remains as part of the GDPs of most countries relatively much smaller than other parts, uh, the other sectors. And you are, you are spot on. The farmer is now an educated person. And sooner or later, if he or she will not vote with their, with their uh, electrical vote, they will vote with, uh, in different ways. And it could become a ticking, uh, a ticking, a ticking bomb. So uh, I, I appreciated the, the question. We didn't address it in our presentation because that wasn't part of our brief on discussion. But we would need a quick uh, update of public uh, policy, of environmental, of legislative uh, changes that will cater to the, uh, the traditional farmer. What we do is mechanized farming, which is different, but we will not be successful without working with the traditional farmers. Okay, thank you very much. Uh Mr. Kamel, and uh, uh, yes, 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 I'm not forgetting you because I'm sure that uh, as, a, as a FAO official and senior official, you would be very happy to address the issue of public policy. Oh, sure. Thank you so much. And, uh, and look, at, I, I refer to many issues related to policy. For example, the, the report of the is probably linked to policies linked to the information of the true cost accounting, which will be modifying significantly the way we align policies. But also, when we talk about innovation and science, which is central, uh, it's one of the elements that we need to accelerate together with data, but also with institutions. A, new, a good policy of innovation and science requires policies behind to set them up, requires institutions in place. If not, it would be very complex. So for sure, uh, everything that we have been talking, at least everything that I talk, is linked to, to, to the design and policies, but we need to be careful not to bring distortive policies that could have worked in the past, but not necessarily will work today. We are in a different environment, and we need to be very careful not to create new distortions. Second, I, I think it's important uh, to correct some issues. Uh, Biofertification cannot happen, does not in increase nutrition capacity. The only way you can increase nutrition capacity of a crop is through biotechnology, which is not biofortification. And the other element which was uh, wrong, uh, GMOs are not accepted and generalized, of course not. GMOs are, are managed and decided by each country. Uh, and there is a lot of scientific evidence behind them, especially more than GMOs on gene editing today. Uh, but this is country by country decision and the institutions and regulations have to be in place in each of, of the countries. So, so we need to be careful uh, with that. And even in Europe, of course, uh, GMOs are not there and uh, there is still discussions on gene editing. So again, there is a lot of evidence already in play that we need to bring to inform people, but we need to assess all the different elements. And finally, on the, on the control environments, horizontal and vertical, so you can have control environments horizontally and vertically. Horizontal have been cost effective. UAE is an extreme example because it's very costly to produce food in UAE, but they are profitable in China, Vietnam, Singapore, it's very profitable. Vertical farming is also starting to be profitable in terms of control environments. There are very good examples in China and Singapore and other regions of the world. So again, it's a way to satisfy food for the urban areas because you get closer to them in terms of production of vegetables and other high value commodities. And that is not GMOs, that is not uh, biotechnology. It's basically 
is a high level precision agriculture to manage properly micronutrients to the to the plants and and water provision and of course uh, uh, the heat that is needed so again it's, it's a technological innovation when you are in the high end of high value commodities which is starting to be evolving rapidly and to make give access to urban especially for uh, households thank you Oh, thank you, Mr. Cullen. We are, we are now, for these very interesting comments, we are now at the end of the session. I just would like to add, as personally, that I've spent uh, uh, now at least three decades of my professional life uh, supporting governments for establishing uh, public agricultural policies in developing countries, uh, in Asia, in Africa, etc. And uh, it's uh, building on uh, Philippe's uh, comment, it's of course a sobering situation to see that in many developing countries, not all of course, but in many developing countries, agriculture uh, has a much lower share of uh, budget, investment and policy attention than it should if we wanted to address all the issues that we have here. So that's a reason for which I'm particularly uh, grateful uh, to the WPC, uh, Thierry, Mrs. Kwan, for insisting on having this discussion on agriculture, because it's, it's not only about discussing the substance, but also just per se, because there's discussion uh, around it, and whatever we say, that it shows the importance that it has in the global agenda, an importance which is really uh, underestimated by uh, many uh, policy players. So uh, thank you very much for allowing us to uh, have this type of discussion. Continuing, maybe if there is another discussion next year, trying to deepen even more uh, some of these uh, policy dimensions at the global level, but also at the national level. Uh, level and trying to dig into this, this agenda. Now, I think that all of you will have recognized that we had uh, an, an, uh, a fantastic group to address those issues uh, on the screen and in the room, and that they have uh, enlightened us uh, with their vision on policies, private uh, investments and, and initiatives, uh, science, uh, that uh, opening new doors into our vision. So please uh, applaud them and thank them.